my dog lovers. Please raise your hand if you currently own or take care of a dog. Oh great, I have all my friends in the house. If you are a cat lover, the cat quiz is scheduled for 2 p.m. <laughs> As most of you know, when we adopt dogs, we do this for various reasons. Companionship seems to be the most common. But then there are other people who like to have a dog to be their exercise partners. And families also like to adopt dogs to teach their children responsibilities. And I get that. My experience of what makes life with dogs really good is when we commit to bring the best out of them. Because when we do that, naturally, they bring out the best of us. Their presence in our life truly can enhance our leadership qualities that will benefit everyone. Now I know leadership is such a big word, but I'm not going to talk about titles and ranks today, but what I'm talking about is character and behavior. They include things such as being empathetic, staying consistent, being responsible, managing our emotions better, and getting creative. And so in my time with you today, I'm going to share with you examples how all of these skills can be strengthened when we partner with our dogs. I didn't get my first dog, a German Shepherd, until I was 31 years old. I wanted a dog as my hiking partner. I still remember the day before this little guy came into our home. I got nervous. So I called up my friend Nancy and I said, Nancy, I'm getting cold feet now. What if Sito takes my freedom away and then I'm going to be stuck with this dog? After all, you hear all these stories that it's harder to move when you have a dog and they constantly want your attention. Well, Nancy, in her wisdom, turned my question around and said, Iris, what if Sito opens you up to a new level of freedom? Wow, the power of questions. She stopped my worried thought pattern and immediately shifted my perspective to the complete opposite. Freedom with Sito. And that is what we created together. His presence in my life is the reason why I'm not only good at training dogs, but I also use the wisdom of dogs in my leadership development programs in companies. I can say without a doubt that Zito largely contributed who I am today and also that I'm in front of you today. Unfortunately, there are also many dog owners who can't say that about their experience with their dogs. Otherwise, we would not see that huge number of dogs being in shelters year-round. Did you know that in America, according to, to the ASPCA, the statistics of shelters shows that the annual kill rate of innocent dogs with great personality is around 390,000, give or take. Yep, it's a big number. And on top of that, there are more than a million dogs sitting right now in boarding facilities and also being with rescue groups waiting for their forever home. It makes me sad to know that people struggle so much with their dogs that they are giving them up. And there are also many people right now who are struggling in silence at home. I'm sure you know some of them. There are the dog owners who, when they're walking their dog, you don't know who is walking whom. And can you believe it? I once met a family who could not get their dog off the couch out of fear that they would get bitten by their dog. Yeah, they were afraid of their own dog. Imagine that. When our dogs don't act balanced and healthy, 
meaning that they are displaying this kind of undesirable behavior. This is not the time to ignore it or play it down. This is the opportunity for us to seize it and to learn and lead better. Because dog leadership, just like people leadership, is not a straight line, even if you receive training and read a few books. Dogs, just like us, they go through phases. Ask my mom who I was as a teenager. <laughs> Dogs have personalities. And then, of course, also unfortunate things happen to dogs that suddenly they create frustrating, obnoxious, and sometimes even dangerous behavior. But that does not mean that we are giving up on our dogs. Quite the opposite. Because if we are doing that, what does it say about us? And what do we teach our children? Instead, this is the time to expand and to explore, well, why is he displaying this kind of behavior? What does his behavior communicate? After all, behavior is communication. But then, instead of blaming the dog, where we are pointing one finger towards the dog, not realizing that three paws are pointing back towards us, that's also the question there. We have to explore the situation even broader and ask ourselves, how do I contribute to my dog's behavior? And what do I have to change? Because this is where the treasure lies. And this is where that rambunctious or even sometimes dangerous behavior can turn into a gift for us to learn, to grow, and to bond together. For many years, I have been fostering shelter dogs, which means our home is their temporary home until their forever family is found. One reason why I love shelter dogs is because, just like us, they come with a unique history. Now, there are some dogs that had a really great life before they ended up in the shelter. And it seems as if the whole transition doesn't affect them much. And then there are other dogs who get really traumatized by that experience. My first foster dog was Shelby. Shelby was a two-year-old Rottweiler that was found with a big animal trap on her leg and a big chain around her neck. Her hind leg was so severely wounded, it had to be amputated. As you can imagine, she was afraid of the world. She was traumatized. When I first saw this dog in the shelter, her energy spoke to me. And I was determined to help her love life again. But she didn't do so well in the shelter, in the facility, because she couldn't walk, she didn't want to go outside, she even bit a person. So initially I thought, this is going to be a long process to rehabilitate her. But Shelby taught me differently. As soon as we brought her into our home, she came out of her shell. Now that gave me inspiration. And then I became creative and found ideas how I could help her overcome her fears. Of course, fear of walking, fear of unfamiliar places, fear of water puddles, fear of water. Now, if you have ever seen a person on the side of the road laying a trail of dog treats towards a street drain, and you thought, what the heck is that lady doing there? That was probably me, because Shelby was afraid of street drains. So we have to come up with creative ideas to help her overcome this. It was truly fun. And within weeks, leading Shelby into a situation to face her fears, she turned out to come and transform very quickly into a happy and confident girl. Shelby reminded me that with balanced leadership, 
which is a combination of empathy and love, but then also boundaries and discipline. Dogs let go of their past quickly. They accept life as is, and then they move on and make the best out of it. That is a noble wisdom. We all can learn from dogs. Typically, when we see a disabled dog, or a dog that went through a lot of physical or even psychological pain, it's very easy for us to feel sorry for them. And then we make up excuses. But that keeps them trapped. Shelby taught me that feeling sorry for dogs is weak energy and does not help them transform. Just like it will not help people feeling sorry for them in order to better their lives. What matters is that as a leader, we strive to make the invisible visible. We can see something in the dog that nobody else can see yet. And then we come up with innovative ways to help them release their fear or pain, never doubting their abilities to overcome and succeed. And that is how dogs bring out the best of us and make us better leaders, where we are equally committed to the relationship and the results, never compromising one for the other. When we integrate a dog into our home, better yet, a shelter dog that maybe had a disadvantaged past, and then we gain their trust, build their confidence, give them discipline. We will not only transform the dog and his life, but we will also transform our own lives. Because the love and the commitment to an innocent being drives us to step outside of our comfort zone, overcome our own excuses and inertia, and then gives our life a deeper meaning. And that is when life with dogs get really, really good. What is also remarkable about dogs is that they are in tune with energy and our hearts. We humans, we process our world or the world from our neck up. Dogs, their strong suit is that they can sense in energies. And not only that, their playful attitude connects us to our heart. They truly remind us that our heart and our feelings always speak louder than our thoughts. A few years ago, I met a gentleman named Tim who had a Labrador retriever mix that he, who, whom he called Jakey. And Tim said to me, Iris, Jakey is a really good dog, but sometimes he gets on my nerves because he keeps on jumping up on me when I come home from work. Not always, but frequently. The more we talked about it, the more he realized that Jakey would only bother him when he had a stressful day at work. And then, of course, the dog jumping up on him got him even more irritated and, and stressed out. But you see, Jakey was in tune with his energy and Jakey recognized that Tim was not his healthy, balanced self. He almost acted like a service dog without training. Now, when Tim realized this, he said, I have to change. And so he started to reduce his stress at work and also to amp up his satisfaction in his business because it got stale and he really lost the joy in his business. In other words, Tim did not only give this gift to himself and Jakey, but he also gave this gift to his family and his team because they learned that he actually was more pleasant to be around. Can you sense the power of dogs? They bring us back to the basics of leadership that impacts not only them, but also the people in our personal and professional lives. They connect us to our hearts. And when a problem comes up, 
They require from us that we are expanding our own skills and that we turn the problem into a gift. And that is how dogs enrich our lives truly from the inside out. So what about you? If you raised your hand earlier that you have a dog at home, how can you include your dog into enhancing your leadership skills? The possibilities are vast. It can be as simple as teaching your dog a new skill, or maybe teaching your dog to stop a nuisance behavior. And if you really have a great relationship with your dog and you don't need all that, maybe it's time for you to take your dog on a daily walk, because that will not only help your dog meet their need for activity, but it will also help you to reduce your stress and to have more health and vitality. And if you don't have a dog yet, I encourage you to visit a shelter or a rescue group nearby. I'm sure they will be glad to introduce you to a furry friend in need. Remember, when you foster or adopt a dog with the intention to bring out the best in him or her, the dog will bring out the best in you. Thank you.